Hi, my name is Marilee Bresciani. I'm the founder and president of Rushing to Yoga Foundation. In Rushing to Yoga, we're really talking about rushing to union with yourself. And what we've discovered through a lot of other people's work in neuroscience and by revisiting the teachings of the wisdom traditions is that we're not necessarily educating our students, PK through 12 and higher education, in the best way that we could. What we mean by that is that right now in the United States, we're privileging the intellect and we're forgetting about providing opportunities for all of the other ways students can learn. We want to introduce a concept called integrative inquiry. I hope you can see this. In integrative inquiry, what we're encouraging students to do is think about their thoughts, their words, and their actions by looking at, of course, what we do know. Evidence, in essence, what do we know to be true? And how are we teaching that in a classroom environment? Oftentimes we're teaching what we know to be true without allowing students to actually incorporate their feelings about these concepts. So when they think about what they know to be true and they're processing it through their thoughts, words, and actions, and that's coming into student learning and development, we're ignoring this whole notion of feeling. We're also in ignoring what is unknown and not felt. In some ways of learning and developing, one of these is often privileged over the other. So sometimes when students are engaging in activities, they're maybe looking for the feeling to have fun or to have release or actually even to be, not that they're looking to be stressed out, but they are. We're creating learning opportunities where they're completely stressed out and it shuts down their ability to focus on knowing. And it shuts down their safe space to explore what is unknown or to even say, to give them the space to say, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that and I don't know what I think about that. So what we're talking about in this integrated inquiry model is that historically we have really focused on the mind and intellect. Students are bringing into the classroom their past conditioning. We're all bringing into any learning and development situation our past conditioning. Yet we're also bringing in our physical body, which may be ailing, may not be ailing. We're bringing in feelings, how we feel about things, what we're sensing, or excuse me, our senses. Um, maybe what you, when you tell me something is true, that it's coming out of research, I may have a gut reaction that that doesn't sit well for me. And where is the opportunity that we're providing them in this student learning and development environment where they can process that. We tend to only evaluate intellectual aspects, not really allow them opportunities to process their feelings and their senses and what's going on in their body. And then we completely ignore the whole spirit, intuition, soul, sensing part of their meaning-making experience of their learning and development. Not all learning and development ignores this, but when I look at my own situation at a state university, I think, wow, we don't really go here. I stay here. As a matter of fact, the students often tell me what I'm doing is really reinforcing what we know to be true. I'm teaching theory, I'm teaching evidence-based decision-making, I'm teaching outcomes-based assessment. It's all up here. What do we know to be true? I rarely provide an opportunity for us to experience, well, what do we feel is true? Even though I might have data that I interpreted to say that this is true, what were my feelings as I interpreted that? And what don't I know about that that I've also allowed to integrate in this cyclical pattern to express my thoughts, words, and actions, to then move into the printed paper, to then move in possibly to publication.
So the idea here is that what we really, really want people to do is to explore this in a manner where we do acknowledge what is known, that we have what we have evidence for, but we also start to integrate and incorporate the feeling and sensing aspect of learning and development. And we create opportunities for students to sit in the ambiguity of the unknown, to sit in this place of incredible creativity. It's where it happens in the unknown. When we think about all the new creations that have come, they have been informed by what we do and do not know. They've been informed by what others have published, theories, research. But the researcher has feeling and senses. The learner has all of this feeling about how they're interpreting this evidence and how they're making meaning out of it. And furthermore, you know that gut feeling that you get sometimes in the back of your neck, sometimes in your heart space, sometimes in your gut. Sometimes it's a tingling sensation, goosebumps, or as my friend calls them, truth bumps. The idea here is that we don't want to privilege one aspect over another as we provide opportunities for ourselves and our students to learn and development. We no longer want to privilege just one capacity, one intelligence. But there's this multiple intelligence, if you will, for lack of a better word. There's this multiple unknown aspect of learning and development that we want to start to bring in. And when I talk to people about that, about this concept, this is usually their action. notion of, I don't want to sit in the unknown. I want to stay in what's known. I want to stay in what I can count. I want to stay in what I measure. And as we think about the whole accountability movement in PK-20 through education, it's also, what can I test? As if that's the only knowing that there is in our universe. No curiosity or inquiry process could happen without imagination, without the unknown. Our greatest discoveries have come when we integrate the unknown with the known. When we tap into feelings and sensations to create a body of wisdom that resides within you, and it resides within me, and I'm hoping we can bring it back to our schools. Namaste. <laughs>